play a melody, it's best to have it memorized. But in order to memorize the melody, it's best to play it. That, that doesn't make any sense. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses and product reviews, please do consider subscribing, and please do hit the like button, which can up your memory retention by up to 15%. Or was it 20? I can't remember. Anyway, today we're talking about memorizing melodies, some strategies to get you learning the melody and build to play it without looking at the sheet music, which is important for a lot of different reasons. But today we're gonna to use it in the context of learning jazz standard melodies. The example from today is Fats Waller's standard, Honeysuckle Rose. So before we dive in, let's just familiarize ourselves with this melody. You can sing along, play along, or follow along on the sheet music as I play the melody, rather bare bones style at a moderate tempo. Now, when memorizing melodies, I take the approach like I do when learning chord changes or any other difficult thing, use Lil Chunks. Now, Lil Chunks is actually the name I've been trying to pitch to General Mills for a cereal brand, but they've yet to return my correspondence. But using Lil Chunks, a four bar phrase, is a great way to take little bite sized bits and really get it in our ears and under our fingers. So, what I like to do is take the iReal Pro app. If you haven't checked that out, it's, it's a fantastic practice tool. And loop four bars at a time and play the melody again and again to get it in our ears. For example, the first four bars. Now, once you've played that little chunk a number of times, it should be in your ear, then put on the backing track and see if you can just sing it even without your instrument. Matter of fact, let's see if you can sing it back. I'm gonna play it, you sing it, I'll play it, you sing it with your nicest voice possible. Now the next step is to look for patterns. Identify the structure of the piece. Now, Honeysuckle Rose is a 32 bar form, which is incredibly common in the Great American Songbook. And it's diagrammed as A, A, B, A. Essentially, there's only two sections, two medium chunks. Not as good of a name for a serial. But we have eight bars and then it's repeated. Then we have a little bridge. We're medium sized bridge, medium chunk bridge. And then another A section is returning again. So we diagram it with a letter representing each contrasting section. So here, once again, it's diagrammed as A, A, B, A. And having that structure in our mind helps us keep organized where we are when playing the melody, also reduces overwhelm. It's not 32 bars and 117 different notes. It's two medium sized chunks, one of which is repeated three times. That's how I like to kind of visualize it in my mind and how I organize it when I'm trying to play live with a band. 
Next step, let's do some basic, and I mean basic, melodic analysis. Now, there's no right or wrong way to do this. There might be a wrong way. We'll find it together at some point. But right now, I just want you to find a way that works in your brains. So I'll show you how I think of it. Now, starting at the melody, I like to think of this in terms of the home key. So at the alto part here, we are in the key of D, concert F. So I like to think of the first note as the fifth of the home key. Now, why? Now, I don't want to think of it as the sixth of the two chord leading to then the fourth of the five chord. I want to think in terms of home key of five leading to three, five leading to three, five leading to three, and then eventually going back home to the root note. That works for my brain. I really don't think it's useful to analyze every single note of how it relates to the individual chords, because remember, chords operate in a context. So this tune opens up with a two, five, two, five, two, five, two, five, but it's all just creating a little bit of color and tension leading back home. It's all operating in the home key of D major on alto. So I like to think in that home key helps keep things rather simple in my mind, and for me, that's quite helpful. Also, it could be helpful to look at the series of notes and see what's underneath, the rungs of the ladder, so to speak. A lot of notes are surround tones, passing towns, lower neighbors, upper neighbors, east side neighbors. Okay, that's not a real thing. But they're accentuating and ornamenting the basis of the melody. So let's take a look at the bridge. Listen to the bridge once, just the melody as written. <laughs> Now, to help memorize it, we can look at what's underneath there. We don't need to do a full Shankarian analysis. And if you know what that is, it's probably time to make your student loan payment. But we can look underneath and see what is the scaffolding, the rungs of the ladder that we're leading to. So for the beginning of this bridge, I think of the root. Actually, it's a dominant one chord, which makes it convenient because it's also the same root as the home key, leading to the third and then a bluesy flat third of the four chord. That's how it works in my mind. So when I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about the scaffolding underneath with some passing tones and some juicy alterations. Listen once to the scaffolding, the bass melody underneath. <laughs> Now, if this is overwhelming and confusing to you, don't worry. This is just one way to look at it. And remember, Paul McCartney can't even read music, and he seems to be doing okay. So if you're not big into theory and analysis and doing these kinds of nerdy exercises, it's fine. You do what works for you and enjoy the music. Because at the end of the day, this is a fantastic hobby that doesn't need to be ruined with too many rules. Now, finally, I wanna give a suggestion, not a strategy and not a rule, but a suggestion, a strong suggestion, but I recommend you learn the melody unadorned. Learn the actual beautiful melody without adding any extraneous things to jazz it up. And here's why. These tunes from the Great American Songbook, these Tin Pan Alley tunes, they are beautiful, they are charming, they're a piece of history. And I don't think they need much more in a lot of cases. Yes, we can have some fun with them, but we have to think, is a lot of noodles and scoops really gonna make it better? Is it, Jared? Is it really gonna make it better? <laughs> Probably not. And also think about the audience. How many people that have come to, will come to listen to you in a coffee shop or a, a bar or something, how many of them have never heard these tunes? And I think it's good to present it in its most simple way. Yes, jazz standards are a vehicle for improvisation, but we got plenty of choruses to do that. So I think we can do judicious ornamentation of the melody, probably no scoops though, if we're honest, and see how we can make it more interesting. But start by learning the bass melody so we don't go into a rut or a habit where we always kind of bend or scoop or add a run up to the note and maybe not adding anything that really is needed to be there to these beautiful melodies. So as you speed it up, Think judicious use of slight alterations, rhythmic variations, and maybe a couple of extra notes here and there until you're very comfortable and know the actual melody. So speeding it up, I might do just something simple like this.
Now, my dear Academy, I'd like to outsource the heavy mental lifting to our community, you guys. How do you memorize melodies? What have you found useful? What tips and tricks and strategies have really paid off for you? Have you tried any of these before? If so, let me know in the comments below. I will see you very soon with another lesson, if and only if you go practice.